I'm about to get started on the wiring for this trailer, so I wanted to show you some of the parts and pieces I was going to be using. So the first thing, this is a basically a junction box, and so this is where my seven round connector will hang off the trailer, but then it goes into this junction box, and then from here I can send my wires to the various locations. This is a breakaway battery here, and I also have the breakaway switch. I think I ordered this one separately and this one came with it or something, but anyway, got that. There's the another cord for the switch instead of that uh, cable that comes with it. I've got a couple of these ovals, six inch ovals for the tail lights, and then I've got a bunch of these three quarter inch little button lights, and these will go for clearance and whatnot. These are some license plate lights which are required here. And then I've got various heat shrink connectors. And these are butt connectors and these are terminal connectors. So got, those have got rings and whatnot on them. I also ordered a bunch of wire here. This was a, a set on Amazon that came with all the colors. The only thing it was missing is it's got purple instead of black so I had to buy some black. I've also got these three quarter inch carbide tipped hole saws and these have the self ejecting plug as well and so I'm going to use these to drill the holes for these little three quarter inch button lights. So that's what I'm working on right now. I got this piece of conduit here so my wires can run through there and be protected as they run across under the trailer. So I'm going to mount my, I think I'm going to mount the junction box right there and the battery box maybe right here. So I've got to figure out where those want to go. I want them out of the way, protected, but still accessible. So those are three tough orders. This junction box I purchased, you can get it with different lengths here. I think this is an eight foot length, which may have been a little bit long for me, but I'm good to go here. And so ground is white. The 12 volt charging line is black. Reverse lights yellow. Left turn and stop red. Tail lights and running lights are green. Right, st right turn and stop brown. And electric brakes are blue. And so based on those functions, I'm just going to start running some wires. So I think I'm going to start back here at the furthest point back here with my tail light <clears throat> there. So I need a, that's my left. So I need a red wire back there. I need a ground, a, a white wire, and I need tail lights, running lights, a green wire. So those are the three wires I'm gonna be running over there right now. According to the light I've got here, this black wire is the tail light, this red light, red wire is the turn and uh, signal and stop and then white is ground so white is the same here so I'm gonna start running those wires the way I'm gonna run my wires I just copied my Hudson trailer they basically <clears throat> had put in some uh, welded in some washers so you can see I got some washers in there and I'm just gonna string my wires along in those washers. Now, that trailer's been working fine. I haven't had any problems with it. If you were gonna be taking this off-road or if it wasn't tucked up under there like that, you may wanna do conduit. Here I am at the left tail light. And so I know I need brake lights and turn signal, running lights and ground here. And so I've got my three wires. So to hook up this light and this light, I'm going to need these three wires. So I'm going to start at the end here and work my way back to where I need to go. So these three wires can go through here. The way I've got this wiring planned out is I'm going to come, so this is the back left corner here, I'm going to come across here with my wires and then head up to the front of the trailer. 
so I just need to start feeding it. Okay, so now we've got our longest run from the front, across, and across to that light. So now we can start adding lights and adding and running this. So for example, this needs to run over to here to this marker light here. So we can start messing with that now. Let's start wiring up some stuff. So these things, these heat shrink connectors are pretty cool. And I bought a couple of these over the years. So let me show you how these work. Because my red wire is my left hand turn signal and brake light, which is only on this light right here, the, the red wire is gonna go all the way uninterrupted to the front. And so that wire we're pretty much finished with. The Green is your running lights, and so we're going to have to get green over here, 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 and here. White is ground, so the same thing. So I like starting at the very, the very back here because you're dealing with less wires. And each wire, so for example, the red wire here is already run, and we're never going to have to touch it again. And so we just go from point to point making our way up to the front of the trailer. Okay, so here we are at the left back light and we've got our left hand turn signal. We've got our connection for that. We also have this as a running light. Now this didn't come with any instructions on what was what. So I'm just, I've got positive right here and negative right here on my battery. And I'm not sure that this light is gonna care which is which but we'll try red to positive, black to negative, just to see what happens. So that works. Let's just see what happens if we reverse them. All right, so nothing if we reverse them. So we, we now know that red is going to be our running light from the trailer and black is gonna be ground from the trailer. Okay. Okay, so red was running light, which is green on the trailer. And running light on the rear light, or tail light running light is black. So, don't worry about the colors as much as the function. I know this sounds really confusing with all these different colors going together, but worry about the function more than the color. So I think I want to do something like that. And it may be a blue connector here. I like to twist the wires up to make them more manageable. Okay, so all those wires are all mashed together underneath the piece of solder. So now we just need to heat them up. Okay, we got the solder melted. We got the heat shrink tubing melted. So that is a connection that should last pretty well right there. Okay, next, I guess we can do our ground. So this, the black wire on the button light is ground for the tail light, the running light. 
and ground is white on the light and ground is white on the trailer as well. Okay, I think we're gonna use the same blue connector. Those seem to work okay when you're stuffing two wires on one side. And there's different ways you can do this, but this way works just, just fine with these connectors. Okay, so I've got all the wire, all the bare wires underneath the piece of soldering in the connector. Now we just heat it up. All right, I can see the solder melting. So another couple seconds here and we should be good to go. All right. And then red on our light is our stop and turn. And this happens to be a left hand. So left hand on the trailer, left hand turn and stop is red. So we'll get that connected. And notice we don't have a left hand turn signal with our running light, light right there. So because we're only doing two wires, let's see if one of the red connectors would be a better fit. Oh yeah, that one fits pretty good. Oh, there goes the solder. Okay. This should all be finished now. And I like starting at the back here because now the red wire, which is the left hand turn, it's completely finished. So it's, it's just uninterrupted going and it's done. The green tail light, we're going to need to splice into it over there. And over here in the middle too for our three center ones. The white, we're going to have to splice into it. So by starting at the furthest point away, we can now work our way. And the wires that are completely finished, such as the red in this case, completely done. We don't have to touch it again. Where we're going to splice into and tap through the, uh, splice into the other colors, we can do that as we go. So next, we need our clearance markers for trailers over 80 inches wide. Trailers that are over 80 inches wide need three clearance lights and it says the guideline says place 6 to 12 inches spaced apart. So I'm just going to put three of my red plug lights in there. So let me get my holes drilled. To make locating these lights a little bit easier I'm going to be using my torpedo level here. So I'm going to level it and make sure that the trailer is level here first. Because if the trailer is not level, then anything your, your level says won't, won't matter. So I'm just going to center this, make sure it's level, and I'm just going to go one, center, and one right there. These are the three clearance, th these are the over 80 inches wide lights. So let's take a look at what we've got going on under here. We've got our wires running along here, but they need to go over to here. So I need to drill a hole in this three inch channel. And it's only got to have two wires go through it, so I've got my, I think that's a three eighths inch. So it doesn't need to be a huge hole. So let's get that finished real quick. We are underneath the trailer and the green and the white we need to have another leg going off over to here to these three clearance lights. So I just got myself some slack in these two. Again, we're done with the red, so we're not messing with that anymore. So now I want to, maybe like right here, I want to splice in a piece that's going to go across to the clearance lights. So we're working under the trailer at this point. So this ought to be fun, getting our connections done. Because this is at a little bit of a delicate uh, position here this may drag the ground 
I made sure to give myself plenty of slack here if I ever have to replace these. So I'm just going to wire time to this washer. Okay, so now we are running on down the line. Now we need to do the right hand tail light and clearance light. My buddy Red just called. He needs a couple sticks of pipe to roll an air conditioner no. around. What's up? What's up, bud? Why are you painting it yellow? Oh, it's green, man. What are you talking about yellow? Well, he made me take my sunglasses off just to double check it. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, they're heading out to go do that air conditioner. So let's get back to work. For our right hand tail and clearance, we still need our ground, which is white, and our tail and clearance, which is green. And then we're also going to need our right-hand turn, which is brown. So this is my ground and tail light coming from the light here. I did run my, my brown for my right-hand turn, but that's just going to get run up to the front of the trailer. So let's get these spliced in. I think I want to splice them in right over here somewhere and then tie them up with this washer right here. And then this is just coming from the spools coming through the tail light. So that's just running wild right now. I haven't finished running my brown right hand turn wire so I'm not going to include that in this zip tie here. I guess I'll leave that kind of loose for now but that's up out of the way. I just finished running the brown wire to the front of the trailer so this is now ready to go. These guys are ready to go and so now we can get our right hand turn and our side marker here all hooked up. All right, if we recall, ground is white, the stop and turn is red, and the tail is black. Okay, we got our right tail light and side marker light finished. So now we are on to this side marker. So that wants to be a yellow one. So we need to drill that. Here's our yellow light that's gonna go in right here. So we want to test it and see, I've got a feeling that black is again gonna be negative and yellow is gonna be positive on this one. Yep. Okay, so let's get our hole drilled out. Okay. We also need a hole in the frame right here to access that point. So we'll just use our 3 8 to drill that just for the wire. Okay, so now we need to make a splice right here somewhere with our ground and our clearance lights. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's get our side clearance marker light wired in.
Okay, so now we're at our right hand rear clearance marker. So we're heading up the way. And the way I had originally decided to do this, I've got some supports going across this. And that was mainly for the trailer brakes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across and get this clearance light and then come across this way and get this clearance light. So we need a splice in the green and white right here at this point. I'm going to use my same methodology and start from my furthest point here and run my wire and then splice it. So I just finished that splice for my tail light and, um, and running lights and ground. We're going across the trailer here and then across. So we're now going to be set up for this side marker light. But before I cut this wire, we need to splice in right here as well. So I need one going from here to this marker light right here. So let's get this splice connected. I got this rear left clearance marker in place and got the wire tidied up a little bit. So moving on to the front. We got our front left clearance light in. I got that tidied up a little bit with a wire tie, a zip tie. And now we are right here for the front right clearance light. So let's get that spliced in and then we'll be heading up toward the front of the trailer. Okay, got that cleaned up. Now we have two more clearance lights. One at the front right corner, one at the front left corner. And that'll be it for our green and white. For the front clearance light, you're supposed to have one on the outermost corner. But since I've got a bend right here, I think I'm going to place one right here and one right here. For this front right corner, I'm doing two amber yellow marker lights. But the way I designed the layout is I'm, I also am going to be running my wire out to that corner. Splicing five wires together was a little bit rough there. So I decided I would hook it up to my battery here and see how we're doing. So those guys are working. And that's working. That one's working. Those guys are working. Those two are working. That one's working. And that one's working. <laughs> so maybe I should have been testing this all along. It would have made troubleshooting a whole lot easier if I had run into problems. But this will be our last, these two here, our last clearance lights. So then we'll be moving on to brakes. The reason I ran the wires on this side of the trailer is because I already had a hole in that cross member. So take a quick look. That came already in there. And if I had been thinking about it, I would have put that on the other side and run it, you know, pretty standard. But anyway, I want to mount this box right in here. And I want to mount the battery right next to it. So let me get a couple holes drilled for this. I've got my junction box mounted and I've got my battery box mounted. So before I get too far, I think I want to go ahead and get all these wires hooked up to where they're supposed to be. What I'm missing so far is the trailer brake wires. So my first wire that I want to get rolling here 
is the ground. So let me show you what I've got here for a ground. I've got a short piece of, I think this is 10 gauge. This was a little bit thicker wire here. And so I just want to run it and ground it like maybe right there or so. And so this came with some self tappers, but I don't think this self tapper will go through 3 16 in structural steel. So I'm going to help it out a little bit with a pilot hole. In this clip, I'm cutting these wires to length and getting some ring terminals heat shrunk onto those. And because I followed the standard seven wire coloring scheme that came with this box, now I can just hook it up by color. And so I'm getting my wires that I've gotten so far ran. I'm getting all those hooked up right now. And you can kind of see that ground wire that's kind of looped under there and, and self tappered to the frame right there. Now I'm ready to run my blue wire for the trailer brakes. And I got a couple problems here. The first problem is that I don't know which, these, these are both black, and I don't know which is which, and which corresponds with these two. So, plus I have a pretty thin, I have a 14 gauge blue trailer wire. So I think I'm gonna run a separate wire for each axle. And that will not only help me with my small, wire size it'll also it won't matter which is which over there and then also the trailer brakes will act independently of each other so that might be kind of cool too if i ever have something break down or something mess up on it so that's what i'm working on right now Okay, there's my first blue wire run. Okay, I'm here at my front axle, so I've got to hook up the blue. And these are my two wires that are that came with the axle. Now the axles don't care which is hot and which is ground. So it doesn't really matter. That's why they're colored the same. And so I'm just gonna hook up one to my blue and then I'll splice in a ground for the other one. Let me show you what's going on with this breakaway. Right here, this is a trailer breakaway box, breakaway switch, I should say. So I've got my multimeter set to continuity and I'm juicing up these two leads here. So when the switch is together, I don't have continuity. But as soon as that trailer breaks away, I now have continuity. And so that's gonna power up the trailer brakes and turn on the trailer brakes. So that's how that switch works. Okay, I think I like that. Now I just need to drill a hole here to slide the wires into the frame there. Let's get that done really quickly. All right, if we take a look at the wiring for the breakaway kit, you've got your blue wire coming straight to the, the trailer brakes, and so power is gonna come from here and go to the, the trailer brakes. What we need to do is we need to hook the battery, which is here, across the switch into the blue going to the trailer brakes. And so when the switch is activated, when the trailer falls off and the pin gets pulled out, power goes from the battery through the switch and juices up the trailer brakes. And I 
I don't. So that means I don't. That means I don't have power of the auxiliary to the back of the truck back here. So this battery is not going to charge while the truck's running. All right, I found out that the trailer battery charger fuse is blown in this truck. So I just went and pulled the one out of one of my other trucks. So let's keep our fingers crossed here. That's it right there. And hope that baby doesn't blow. All right, so far so good. Let's see if we are charging over here. And we are, look at that. Sweet. So that fuse just needed to be replaced. Okay, so when the truck is on, and towing the trailer, it is charging this little battery. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here. I know it's turned into kind of a long video, but I didn't really see any other videos on how to wire an equipment trailer like this, so I wanted to be fairly thorough. And so here I'm just finishing up with this little cover and getting these clamps on these wires. And so, one of the things that working on this wiring has done for me is it's given me a pretty good appreciation for the breakaway safety kit that comes on these trailers. And so I know my other two trailers that the, the batteries aren't working anymore and those, those systems aren't working. So working on this and wiring this up has really given me an appreciation for this system and make, and, and the value in having it work. So I'm going to get those other ones working. And I also see some of my other contractor friends with their trailers in various states of disrepair. And it's just like, you know, you can do better than that. So that's one thing this has done for me. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching.